Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is a, a wonderful, amazing, historic day, uh, not only for Gonzaga University, Gonzaga Athletics, and the Pac-12, but also uh, for collegiate athletics, uh, I think, in this country. Uh, it's an opportunity uh, to really uh, acknowledge the incredible and uh, historic uh, work that Gonzaga University has done, uh, but also the opportunities that the Pac-12, as it builds itself, uh, is imagining with Gonzaga as a member. And we're incredibly honored and very, very grateful for the opportunity that this represents for us and for our student athletes, coaches, and programs. I want to take an opportunity uh, today to acknowledge that we are and have been proud members of the West Coast Conference now for about 45 years. And the West Coast Conference has been an exceptional conference for us, very, very good conference for us to be a member of. And we have appreciated uh, the collegial uh, support, uh, the many generosities and, and kindnesses of our colleagues at West Coast Conference member institutions, my colleague presidents, and in a special way, uh, the commissioners that have led the WCC uh, in the most recent iteration, Commissioner Stu Jackson, who has been an unfailing supporter of Gonzaga University and our membership in the WCC. Uh, this announcement today represents for Gonzaga a very significant and important milestone in the history of Gonzaga Athletics and the university. And I'm extraordinarily proud of our athletic director, Chris Standiford, uh, and his colleagues for their leadership and their efforts on behalf of the university to gain for Gonzaga this opportunity. It is an opportunity that certainly uh, represents a significant milestone for Gonzaga Athletics. But I believe it's important to acknowledge that part of the process that led to this announcement involved my direct engagement with colleague presidents in the Pac-12. And an important part of the discernment that we have undertaken is an evaluation of the member institutions and the broader opportunities that membership in the Pac-12 represents for our universities, our universities as academic communities, the opportunities for our faculty and staff, the opportunities for our students to engage in new and different ways with member institutions in the higher education space. It is a privilege to be joining the PAC-12 because of the opportunities that these member institutions also represent for Gonzaga University as an academic institution. Uh, today is really an opportunity for us to obviously answer questions that you may have regarding this membership. And uh, we are very, very excited about the possibilities that this represents uh, to be a member institution in the building and the creation of a new uh, major national conference. Uh, because for us, uh, this is not only membership. It's an opportunity to participate in imagining what the future of the Pac-12 will be together with some wonderful and excellent colleagues. And finally, I do want to take an opportunity in a special way to thank Commissioner Teresa Gould for her leadership, her invitation to us, and her recognition of the potential that Gonzaga University represents to the Pac-12. It's truly an honor to have had the opportunity to work with her on this, and we all very much look forward to working together with the commissioner and the presidents and all of those at the member institutions uh, to realize the vision that she is articulating uh, for this uh, league. So uh, with that, I'd like to open it up and uh, answer any questions you might have for me. And if there are questions that I believe would be better answered by uh, Chris Standiford, our athletic director, then I'll, 
all up unto him and allow him to answer those as part of his session with you. So any questions you have, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, President McCullough, thank you for your time. Um, why now? Why, why did you feel now, now was the right time to make this move for Gonzaga? It's a great question. I think uh, we have been aware, obviously, of the incredibly dynamic, changing landscape of collegiate athletics now for a um, long time, actually, for a number of years. And Gonzaga is uh, a big believer in studying the space, evaluating opportunities, and really, from my perspective, this is the result of many, many months of uh, reflection and exploration. Uh, the opportunity to look at um, all the change and look at where the opportunities might be is something that we've held as a posture for some time. So uh, now is the right time because the invitation comes at a time when uh, the evolution of the Pac-12 is clearly itself moving quickly. And uh, as we look at the landscape, uh, we're not altogether sure that an opportunity like this would offer itself again for some time to come. So it feels like the right time, uh, having done a lot of due diligence and a lot of exploration of where we're at, what our desires are, and, and also really considering what their desires are too. Uh, Andrew Quinn, Creme 2 News. President McCullough, this has been kind of a decade of people wondering if Gonzaga was ever going to leave the WCC. And I know you've had conversations with a myriad of other conferences. I know you mentioned kind of the newness and building something fresh with the Pac-12. But what else kind of stood out about this opportunity in particular, as opposed to maybe some of the conversations you've had over this last decade? Sure. Well, obviously, uh, one of the things that we put at the forefront of all of our thinking and our consideration is our student athletes. Uh, the impact that uh, our relationships have on the student athletes and in this particular configuration, the conferences uh, that we've been uh, looking at or that have been looking at us, the question time and time again is what is the impact going to be on the student athlete experience? and. I mean that both in terms of athletic opportunity, but also academic opportunity. And I feel that the members of the Pac-12 are really sensitive to that same issue. And as the Pac-12 considers its membership, and uh, clearly the center of gravity remains in the West, that creates some wonderful opportunities uh, for a continuation of our real care and support for our student athletes consideration for travel and the impact on their schedules and uh, yet at the same time opens up some fabulous new opportunities for competitiveness. So that is very much a factor in our consideration and has been since the beginning. Uh, Austin Getz, KHQ TV. Uh, President McCullough, when you talk about the opportunities for student athletes, how big was it to find a conference that's still a regional conference, one that won't have uh, travel issues that we're seeing in some of the other conferences with uh, teams having to go across the country on weeknights and school nights and things like that? Yeah, it's a huge consideration. And obviously, as we've seen, uh, the, the formation of new conference relationships and, and changes in institutional membership, uh, we've been watching and, and considering carefully what the impact of those changes are for the institutions and for their, their student athletes and their staffs. Um, the, the, the work of supporting uh, even a, a, a regional, national uh, presence is difficult work. It presents a lot of challenges uh, to everyone who's involved with it as it is. So clearly taking into consideration what the additional impact would be has been a real consideration, and, and it relates to all of the sports that we sponsor. Um, we're really, really passionate about making sure that we strike a balance between opportunity and ensuring that our student athletes are able to access uh, equally the academic experience that we promise them. Uh, Theo Lawson, Spokesman Review. Um, can you give us some more insight into the timeline when these discussions started with the Pac-12? when they kind of escalated and uh, when you guys finally decided it was, it was the right move to make? Yeah, so it's happened very, very quickly. 
Um, we actually began conversations uh, in the very, very recent past, um, and those conversations moved quickly and they accelerated quickly. Uh, we had uh, obviously been aware of and paying very close attention to all of the changes that have been happening across the landscape, uh, and that has been an important part of the work that we've been doing because we have really charged ourselves and been charged with the responsibility for, uh, as I said, leaning in and, and trying to do everything that we can to be proactive. Uh, so uh, I'm very grateful, actually, and, and I feel we've been in a very privileged place that, uh, that our athletic director and his team, and to a certain degree, I myself, um, have fostered and maintained great relationships with colleagues across the country, uh, and that has allowed for us to understand more comprehensively and in more real time what it is that the opportunities might be. But this is this has unfolded pretty quickly. Uh, Nick Gibson, the spokesman of you. Uh, you announced your retirement earlier this year, so I'm curious where today in this decision kind of falls in your stint as president? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the work that we've been up to that I believe has been part of leading to this decision has been ongoing for several years. And uh, while my term as president does not conclude until next July, the expectation of our Board of Trustees and, and our institution is that I continue to serve fully into that role until the conclusion of my time. And so especially this fall, uh, as we discuss the various priorities for the institution and the agenda that I would be asked to follow by the board, uh, this continued to be uh, on the list. And so uh, really I think our board of trustees and our institution think about the, the, the arc, if you will, as an institutional arc. And change in leadership is inevitable. Uh, the question is, how do the decisions that we make animate the strategic plan, the priorities that we've set for ourselves, and the expectation, I think, fully is that once we set objectives that we are going to set out to accomplish them to the best of our ability. So I, I think it would be important to say that continuity in that regard is the, is the priority. President McCullough, Doug Nad Bordick from Public Radio. Um, so when you negotiated, Gonzaga negotiated with Pac-12, what did you quote unquote need to get in order to pull the trigger and say, we will, we will um, become members of the Pac-12? And then how does this affect the, uh, the, uh, the financial situation for your athletic department and your university? That's a, a wonderful question and it has a lot of different um, layers and responses associated with it. I think. You know, from, from our perspective to, to a degree, one of the things that was really critical was answering the question, how would we be viewed? Uh, and I mean that in terms of issues of governance and participation. So uh, we are obviously joining a conference that is uh, dominated by institutions that have uh, important and significant football programs, and we are not. Uh, a school with a football program. And, and that inevitably is going to raise questions as well about the future of Gonzaga athletics once again. But uh, the reality is, is that uh, one of the issues that we really felt was important to answer is, what would Gonzaga's role be at the table of institutions? Because even though there are uh, football related decisions that uh, would not affect the institution, there are also ones that would and the resources of the conference are going to be impacted by football, football revenues, football expenses. So a, a tremendous amount of our time was actually spent with the commissioner, with colleague presidents, uh, with member institutions, asking and getting answers to those questions. And uh, I'm very pleased uh, with the response that we have received. Uh, I think Gonzaga is truly viewed as an equal partner in the work of governing the Pac-12 moving forward. And, and that's important to us because we do want to play a, a role in helping to uh, realize the vision and to shape the direction of the conference. So that's, a, that's an important component. Um, certainly opportunities that we may uh, be able to create 
uh, within the conference for the institution, but also for all of the conference members uh, that relate to um, revenue opportunities and so forth was a factor. Uh, the, the costs associated with doing the work, with supporting uh, the programs uh, increases. Uh, the challenges of figuring out how to cover those costs and support uh, the programs effectively is an issue. Uh, it is by no means the only issue, but it is certainly an issue that has been a focus of our conversations. Uh, and then again, the question of the commitment of these institutions to view Gonzaga as a university and to create opportunities for not just uh, the athletic division, but also for academic programs and for students involved with research and internships. These are all part of the conversations that we've had and they've been really important from my perspective to make sure that we have secured commitments around as well. So. Those are, those are several of the high points that have been really important to me. Uh, Julian Minutes on KXLY, hey Chris. Um, the, uh, how, how much, I guess in the statement you guys talked about solidifying this conference as a basketball brand conference, especially with your guys' men's and women's program success they had. Um, how, much how, how many conversations have you had with Coach Few and Coach Fortier about you guys making this move ultimately? Obviously, they're huge stakeholders in this, right? So we're we're we've been in dialogue really for three years, uh, talking about what is it that is going to give them the tools that they need to continue to grow the programs. Um, both of them have individual characteristics, and they both grow in this in this opportunity. Um, you know, obviously, what Mark has accomplished is legendary and and spectacular uh, in many ways. But what Lisa's doing is equally as as exciting. And the Spokane community supporting both those programs is really unique. And I think that what we're able to bring to this conference is uh, an enhancement to a basketball opportunity for them, but also what we got in return is a commitment that this conference really cares about basketball. Um, that it's a, uh, an opportunity for us to have an impact on them and be a, an, an important partner uh, in who they are and what they do. Um, that was that was really the theme that really, that that carried out through this whole thing, and Coach Few and, and Coach Fortier very much uh, echoed that same sentiment. You know, it was important for them to be a valued member of something, and they uh, and they they're all in on it. Uh, Andrew Quinn, Krem Two, Chris. Uh, I'm sure you've sat in on realignment meetings before when Mike was the director of athletics. What kind of stood out to you, or what was different about your meetings with the Pac-12 and? Can you kind of touch on the, the Mountain West schools that they have added now and how much that kind of enriches the conference? Yeah, I, I think that there's so much that's changed in college athletics in the last three years uh, that it's really hard to draw any parallels. Um, there are so many more dynamics that we have to figure into every equation, and realignment is just a response to that. So the issues that existed five, six, seven years ago are, um, I wish we could go back to just dealing with those issues. Uh, you know, with the pending settlement in the House case and the dynamics associated with potential changes in governance, you, you uh, are dealing with a whole different set of um, challenges. So there, these talks were much, much different because they come from a different place. And that is, a, that is a, a, a core part of our decision, is to become part of something that is not looking backwards to, de to define who they are, but rather using the traditions of yesterday to build forward and innovate and look at the contemporary nature of what college athletics is and to be able to ideate around that and really build something that might be more adaptable than traditional structures. It's super exciting to, to have that kind of dialogue and to, to be around people that are really trying to think differently and think out of the box. Austin Getz, KHQ. Uh, Chris, when you talk about the Pac-12, they still need to add at least one more uh, football school to get the full boat in terms of being recognized as a conference. Did that bring any hesitation, or, or how did that impact the thought process of you wanting to join on now rather than wait and see and, and join on at the end? Well, I think you have to look at the seven members today and realize that's an awesome group of, of athletic departments. It's a great group of institutions. Um, the regionality can't be... Uh, overemphasized uh, just because it creates more opportunities for us to do more uh, with the resources we have. It doesn't stretch us too thin. It allows our fans to be more engaged. 
in, the, in uh, following our teams. Um, it puts us in a little bit different locales than we have been historically, but in some cases the same. So, uh, you know, what that eighth, ninth, tenth, I don't know what it's going to be yet, right? Um, what, those, what that team ends up being, I have a, the full faith in the membership that they're going to make a really smart decision, and, and we'll, have a, we'll have a vote in that. We'll be able to go through that process with them, and our perspective will be heard, and that was an important aspect of this as well. Chris Dugnan, Morning from Public Radio again. I'm trying to get a little more clarity about the financial situation. Are you walking away with more money than you would in the West Coast Conference, significantly more money? And uh, I guess we'll go with that then. Yeah, I, I was getting the sense you were going to go to the finances. Um, so the, the way I'll answer, I'll defer the, the particulars to the Pac-12. But the, the qualitative and quantitative aspect of this relationship is really what drove the decision making. Um, yes, this, this is a better situation for us financially without question. Um, it is a, an opportunity for us to invest more directly in our student athletes and create a more robust experience for them and potentially for more of them. Um, that's the changing nature of college athletics and it was a really important part of this decision. But the qualitative components to it were just as important and I would say in some cases the, the real part of our discernment to get to an outcome which is the alignment, values alignment and the commitment to creating terrific experiences for our student athletes that were consistent with our educational mission. And uh, that was a, a really, really powerful part of the, of the decision making. Um, I know you said you can't get into specifics, but there's been some reports suggesting that you guys would kind of get close to a full revenue share uh, compared to what the uh, football schools are getting in the conference. Can you confirm if that's accurate? I will defer to the Pac-12 on the question directly. I will say that the complexity, that's a very highly reported metric, but it doesn't reflect the complexity of the financial decision. Um, there's a lot of different components that go into um, conference revenues and distributions. Um, I will say this, we're really excited about uh, the terms we agreed to. We feel like they are uh, in a space of, of true partnership and represent the quality and the value that Gonzaga believes that we bring to the proposition. So um, I know that's not the answer you're looking for, Theo, but that's all you're going to get. And Chris, could you just touch on, you know, this move not just being a basketball move and getting all of the Gonzaga sports included in this move and what that kind of means for the other sports and entering this conference? Sure, that's a position that we've been super consistent in with anybody we've spoken to. This is not a, a bifurcation of our athletic department. We are our one. Um, but this is a conference still just trying to discover who they are in terms of their full membership, um, sports sponsorship, et cetera. There's a lot of details to work out, and we've got a couple years to do that. Um, I hope very much that we have a home for every one of our student athletes in this process, but those are bigger decisions that have to be made um, as a group, and uh, just uh, being all, uh, you know, what, eight hours into it now, I think we need a little more time to figure it out. Awesome, well, thank you all for being here. Really appreciate it, and uh, I'd also like to extend my gratitude to President McCullough, um, and also echo his sentiments regarding uh, Commissioner Jackson. Um, this conference is in a, in a uh, and we're in an amazing position to be able to enter a great conference, but we are, we are moving towards the Pac-12, not away from the WCC. And that's because of, of the leadership that we've had, both at the presidential level and, the, and the, in, in Stu's case, and the commissioner level, that have really put together a great um, conference that we're going to be very proud to represent. We're going to battle like crazy for the next two seasons to, to win some more championships.